A week against number one and number two in the Mid-American Conference for the Ball State men's basketball team. Welcome back into the show, everybody. It's the James Whitford Show. He's the head coach, James Whitford. Joel Gadet, glad to have you along with us. And as we continue to uh, plow through the season here, you're down to the home stretch. You've only mm -hmm. got four regular season games left. It's all about a growing process, and you're kind of hitting the, the home stretch here. What do you still want to see? Well, the biggest thing I want to do is keep keep getting better defensively. You know, we had uh, the number one and number two ranked teams in the conference on the road this week, so a tough week, but thought we defended really well against Kent State. First half against Central, I thought we defended well. Second half, I thought we uh, we hit our melting point. We really kind of collapsed in the second half defensively in that game. This is the hard part of the season, too, because it's the grind mm -hmm. where you can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel and you got to dig deep because mm -hmm. you're tired, you're beat. Everybody's hurt at this point in the year. Um, what kind of grit does it take to, to kind of gut out these last few games? It takes a lot. You know, this is that time of year, like you said, for everybody. Everybody's bodies, you know, feeling it. It's a long season. And in our particular case, you know, we haven't been on the winning side of the fence in a while. So it's, it can be hard on your morale, and it really takes uh, character. You can see the character of the real competitors, which ones stand out as being uh, your, your real fighters. I was going to say, guys still good with it? Because it's got to be hard. It is hard, and you know, I, I thought we hit our, our breaking point there at Central Michigan, and that was something that disappointed me. Um, you know, on the one hand, I understand it. On the other hand, it's, it's quite honestly, it's not acceptable. It's something we have to, you know, can't allow that to happen if we want to be a good basketball team. But it's hard, and, and uh, at the same time, it's, you know, we, we have to accept the fact that, hey, this is what we do. You know, we could have a real job. We play basketball for a living. It's a great life. And, Got to compete all the way through the finish line. Let's talk about the games and the action in particular. Uh, Kent State first. You get them without Jimmy Hall, so at least mm -hmm. that was a benefit going into yeah. this one. It was, and it impacts them. They've played really well without him, but it, it probably helps us more than most teams because, you know, we're <clears throat> we uh, we have a tough time defending inside without Cammy. So they were without Jimmy Hall. We were without Cammy. It kind of neutralized it both ways. Devereaux Manley, you guys did a really good job of containing the first time. This time, though, he mm -hmm. kind of was the compensation for them. He was. As we defended, he, he went five for nine, or I think it was five for nine yeah. from three, and, and uh, was the difference in the game. If, if we did a better job on him, that would have been enough, I think, for us to get out of there with a the win. Let's take a look at how things broke down at the MAC in Kent, Ohio. Second consecutive year, you guys have gone there and had a really good start to the game. Sean Sellers hit a three to get you guys on the board right away, and then it's Kiapwe and Sellers with another couple of threes. You guys were up nine to four early. Yeah, got, got off to a great start. I thought our guys were really ready. and. Um, you know, Sean, he's shooting the ball so well that you give him any space, he's going to make it. Bo Calhoun, the other guy who's been really good for you guys of late, winds up with a career-best 18 points in this game, and that's just running the floor for Bo. Misses the first, but the offensive rebound and the putback. Yeah, it was great to see for Bo. He's, he's so so much improved as a player and, and a product of his hard work. Chris Brewer, one of a senior-laden backcourt for Kent State, and you can really see it in this game, gets the jumper at the elbow, ties things up at 15. Brewer finished six points and four assists. Cardinals come right back, though, and it's more Bo Calhoun able to stretch things out a little bit. That is not where Kalik Spicer wants to play defense. No, no that's the great thing about Bo is he's, he's improved enough that he's not a great finisher, but he can hit that shot. Talked about Devro Manley, the slightest sliver of daylight, yeah, 19 he's, points. He's a really good shooter, and, and uh, he had come off of, uh, I think, it made like 6 out of 25 coming into the game, but had a big night, 5 for 9 against us. Francis Kiapwe had a big night, too. He knocks down another one. He's been 60% from three over the last eight games. 60. Let's go to the second half. Cardinals were down seven at the break. Sean Sellers able to utilize the, the pump fake a little bit. Great it's great space. to see. And you can see that's coming inside out off a double team in Franco. He kicks it out, finds the open man, and another inside out. You know, really, we're becoming a really unselfish team. We're sharing the ball very well on basketball uh, on the offensive side. And that's why we're scoring as well as we are. Ten points for Jeremiah Davis after the three made it a two-point game, but then Kent State able to bounce right back. Devro Manley another three. This is an interesting stretch. Back-to-back -back Kent State buckets here, but there were six minutes between them. Talk about defense. You guys shut them down for a little bit. Yeah, that was the key for us coming back into this game, and that's that's going to be the, the key for us every single game. If we can defend uh, well in these final four games, and we're going to come up with some wins, but. That's been the thing that, that we've had a tough time with. Jeremiah Davis rises for another three. That makes it a seven-point game. He kind of lived on that five, six, seven, eight-point cusp. Bo Calhoun able to cut it to four, though, with about three and a half minutes left. And again, we mentioned 18 points for Bo in this one, a career high. He's averaging nearly a double-double. Talked about that last week on the show uh, here in Mac play. But again, it's Devereaux Manley, eighth in the nation, by the way, in three-pointers made this year, 88 of them. 
Gary Akbar, the layup, makes it an eight-point game. And then in the closing couple of seconds here, Bo Calhoun knocks down a three. It brings you guys close. It's a four-point game with about a minute left. But Kent State hits its free throws late, goes five of seven at the line. And mm -hmm. when you're in that spot, that's what it needed to do. Yeah. It good, Kent's a good team, and it was a good game on the road. And, and uh, But I thought our guys really competed. You know, we uh, took three charges. We defended uh, very well. And you can see right there, Bo and uh, Franco did a great job inside for us. What we said, one of the better defensive performances for you guys against Kent State had to be good to, to get another really good kind of defensive effort from mm -hmm. your guys. No, it really was, and that, that's been our uh, missing element here down the stretch and something we have to get better at. So we're going to use this fancy uh, telestrator right here. I'm going to do my Jay Billis imitation and <laughs> try to show you uh, through this screen uh, how it happened here. So I'll start with, you can see in this possession here, it's what we call a transition because Sean Sellers went for the offensive rebound. He's out of the play, so we're, we're five on four defense. As they push the ball up, you got one guy stopping the ball, you got another guy helping make sure he doesn't drive, and these guys are really in a zone until Sean can get back into play. And biggest part, when defenses are the most vulnerable, is that moment right there in transition. It's, if you want to be good on defense, you have to be able to get organized five on five. So we do that. Kent State sets up a play. You can see Sean. Now, Sean makes a really good play here as they set a ball screen on Jeremiah Davis. He has to both what we call show, not to allow them to turn the corner on the ball screen, and he also has to be able to recover as they hit the roll guy. And, uh, and Sean's able to do both. He helps on the ball screen. He comes back. He makes a hard play on the ball, blocks the shot, and kind of gets us going in transition on the other way. And impressive play by a young freshman. Good physical play, too, against a guy bigger than he. So to be able to get back, to show, to slide, to recover, yeah. and when you've got somebody who can kind of outmuscle you, still yeah. block the shot. That's a, that's a big progress for Sean. You know, he's only 180 pounds and, and 185 pounds, and he's, he's got to continue to get stronger, but he's made some big strides defensively. Let's flip it around the other side. Good defense can lead to good offense. You guys get out in transition on this next one. Yeah, it is, and this is uh, what you want to show is, is you want to show your players. Is here's a clip of us playing defense again here. Kent State runs an action where you can see they get a – High screen right here. They're doing what's called, we call that a flare screen for France, uh, trying to get Francis Chiapway clipped off. And down here they have what, what's called a tight pin down for Jeremiah Davis. And we're able to negotiate both screening actions. And Jeremiah is doing a good job pressuring the ball. You can see they're trying to throw the ball into the post, but they can't get it to him. Franco's doing a great job. So they're going to go try to get the ball to the post from that, that angle. And once again, Franco is able to deny the post catch both ways. So we're doing a great job defensively, and you can see Jeremiah sees that the defender is not able to see him. It's one of the keys here, if I can show you right here. If you watch Jeremiah's eyes, one of the examples of a good defender, he notices that the guy can't see him. He sees the back of his head. So he takes that example or that uh, uh, opportunity to get a steal, diving on the floor, team hustling like crazy, hard play at the ball drives to the rim and Francis gets a foul. When we've talked about post defense so many times, what Franco did there to facilitate all that is huge because once you're in the paint, you're yeah. dead duck, but it's yeah. keeping it out of the paint. That's right, and in his size, you saw he was, he was what's called fronting the post. He was trying not let the ball in, in there. If you're a seven footer, sometimes you let it in there and you trust your size. At his size, you got to keep it out of there, and that was a great job by Franco, never letting the ball get entered into the post. we got one more play defensively that sets up what you're looking for. Uh, you want hustle. You want heart. Yep. Taking charges is kind of the embodiment of that. You have to. It's in physical play is what we're looking for, and we took three charges in this game. This is one by Rocco here that was a great play. I mean, this guy's running 100 miles an hour, and if I let you watch that again here because that doesn't feel make good. no mistake, <laughs> that hurts here. This is the end of the second play, and I'll lead it right to the third here is – this guy's running 100 miles an hour. He steps in. He sacrifices his body. It's a great play. And charges are huge because it's a turnover. It's a foul, usually on one of their better players. It gets us one foul closer to shooting the bonus on the other end. It's a game-changing play, and in that game we had three of them. How do you learn to take a charge? I feel like there's got to be some sort of hesitation when you're younger yeah. And then as you get older, maybe it becomes a little bit easier, but you still have to be a little bit skittish. It is, and being strong helps. You know, so the stronger you are, the easier the impact is to take. But a lot of it is just practice. You know, we practice them probably every second or third day. Try to take them every day in practice, but we'll have specific drills where we're teaching those guys how to take them because there's really a technique to it too. Yeah, you have to take it in the center of your chest. You can't sometimes to avoid the contact. People start twisting their body, and it's 
much more likely to be a block. So we work on both the technique of it and the physicality of, of uh, getting used to taking them. Let's talk about the system real quick as well. You've said this on the radio a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Same system that two of the top three teams in the country played defensively, Arizona and Virginia, is what you guys are trying to institute here. So mm -hmm. when everything gets clicking, you're pretty confident in what this can be defensively. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very confident we'll get there in time. You know, so I go, uh, you know, no different than when we got the Xavier, our defense started out kind of where ours is now. Four years later, we were the 12th best defensive team in the country. And at Arizona, it was, it was a constant progressive buildup where each year we got better until our fifth year, we were the best defensive team in the country. And I'm confident the same thing will happen here. We have to get stronger in the offseason. We got to continue to grind it out. But we have a very sound system, one that I, I really believe in. It was a tough week for Ball State because they had to take on Kent State, which if the tournament started today, Kent would be the one seed. You got to follow that up with the joy of taking on the team that would be the two seed if it ended today. Central yeah. Michigan was next up on the docket. Head up to Mount Pleasant where the Cardinals lost in three overtimes last year. Ball State trying to bounce back this year and you started out pretty well, played a good first half. We did play a good first half and uh, you know it's a difficult environment. It was, it was great fun watching what Central Michigan's built up there. And difficult environment uh, to play in, packed house, but I had a really good first half and were competitive all the way through. Central's had over 4,000 fans in that building each of the last four weekend games. Had 4,000 in it once prior to this year when they renovated it back in 2010. You can see Franco House get underneath, offensive rebound and the putback. That's one area you guys really excelled in this one. You had 10 offensive rebounds to their none in the first half, but this was kind of the game changer. Fowler hits the three at the break. It was a tough break right before half. You know, it's a two-point game and our ball, seven seconds to go. Xavier gets knocked down. Certainly looked like he got clipped, but either way, it leads to a kind of a Hail Mary three at the end of the half. And then you see the barrage of threes that starts for Central Michigan. Brandon Rayston had one in there. He had a seven three-pointer game uh, coming into this one. John Simons, who was one of three the first time you guys met, goes five of eight. And that's just what Central does. They go on a 20 to six run. Yeah, they, 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 uh, they did, and we, we uh, <clears throat> got beat in transition too many times. And, you know, I want to give um, really great respect to their program and Chris Fowler and, and uh, what they've done there. It's, it's really been a heck of a job by Keno Davis and a lot of fun to watch. Like Hibbett's knocking down a three. They just keep it coming in waves. Sean Sellers won the answer, but uh, at that point, the, the ship had sailed and the Cardinals fall at Central Michigan. 83-60 is your final score. And... Take a look at your leading scorers. Sean Sellers had 19. Good for him to get back in the flow of things offensively. He had had kind of a spell there. Goes three for six in the Kent game, the five for six there. Uh, a lot of that in the first half was a really big jolt for you guys. Yeah, Sean's playing uh, great on the offensive end. You know, he's such a good shooter. He's done it every year that he's played in the high school level. And uh, he got open a couple times. They're double teaming Franco. And Franco's such an unselfish player. He kicks it back out, and we're getting great shots. Sean Sellers. Freshman of the year chance in this league? Yeah, yeah, I think he deserves it, you know, based on what he's done during the course of the season. And, you know, whether he gets it or not, he'll certainly be all freshman team and, and uh, I think would be deserving of it, in my opinion. How impressive is Central Michigan? Just from the standpoint, you guys told the team this afterward. Same team, mm -hmm. same team that won three games last year. Mm -hmm. And if the tournament was today, they're the two seed. Yeah, you know, it's really impressive, and it's uh, it's been it's really done the right way, you know. And it's great to see they they got such a great turnout and fan base, and they got a great environment to play games in now. And and I'm happy for them because you know, they they're a little bit like us, you know. They had two seasons in a row where they took a lot of L's, and like as we kind of already addressed, it's it can be hard on your morale. Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Same players went from three and fifteen in the league last year to twenty and five, ten and four in the conference, and uh. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for them and, uh, because they've, they've earned it. They've done it the right way and a and, uh, great, great example for our players because I feel like we're on the cusp of breaking through as well. Winning his team in the MAC, 20 wins, the only team in the MAC that's hit that number so far. Kent, by the way, is the other one that's close. Kent has 19. Um, so 39 total wins against the Cards last week. It's a fun way for them to play too and it can be frustrating to defend because mm. the threes start falling and it's really hard to let the game kind of get out of control because it, it's points so fast. Yeah, and it's the, it, <clears throat> that's the part that, that is something we have to get better at. Some of it's a product of a young team. Some of it we just have to learn to handle the emotions or the pressure of the game. You know, it's a very competitive game through halftime. And, um, and they come out, it's a five-point game at the end of the you know, first four minutes. But they can score in bunches. And yeah. it goes bang, bang, bang. 
and we have three bad possessions in a row on offense, which three bad possessions in a row transition defense in a really small window there, and that's where I'm really trying to use my timeouts. But, you know, what goes at that point, it's a, it starts maybe at about a seven or eight point game, still highly competitive game and stretches to 15 like that. You only turned it over 13 times. We talk mm -hmm. about turnovers so many times, and 13 is a, is a fine, acceptable number at this point. Um, but at one point, you had 10 turnovers, and they had 20 points off of them. Mm -hmm. And it's that efficiency. They're not scoring every time down, right. but you hit more threes, and yeah. all of a sudden, that's where it balloons, too. They're a really good shooting team, and if they're, if they're making shots in their home gym, they're hard to deal with. And, uh, and uh, they were able to do that in the second half against us. It was waves of additions for Keno Davis that got things going, brought in a freshman class, brought in another class on top of that. Mm -hmm. You're going to do the same thing here. You brought in a freshman class. You've got another yeah. class coming in. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about some of those guys. Trey Moses, Tajay Teague, mm -hmm. both coming in next year for you. They've signed in allies, uh, so, so you got them. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you got to be happy. Couldn't be happier because obviously what we needed in this class was size. and The, the class before, we really needed skill. You got Jeremy, Francis, and Sean, and now uh, Tajay. I had him stand next to Coach Thornton. <laughs> Coach Thornton was a starting center on a, a, you know, a Xavier team that was terrific. And, uh, and uh, he's taller than Coach Thornton. He's got a longer wingspan. You know, he's 6'9", 6'10", 7-foot wingspan, and uh, he's going to be a great player. And, and Tajay is just as big, 6'9", long wingspan, and bright, feeling, bright ceiling. Let's talk about Trey first real quick. This is a guy that was 6'2", mm -hmm. as a freshman in high school. Yeah. He broke his leg, yeah. and he grew to 6'9", which is not supposed to happen. <laughs> um, but he's, he's a guy that gives you, like Rashawn Richardson, we talked about this point last year, great size, yes. but because he had that growth spurt, great skill. He reminds me of a lot of a kid I coached at Xavier named Jason Love, and uh, Jason was a great player for us at Xavier, but Tajay has great hands and great feet. You know, he's, uh, he's got to get his body in better shape, and, um, and as he does, he'll, he moves pretty well, but he'll continue to move better, but you can see his, his coordination, and this is some old film for him there, because he's, he's a lot bigger than that and running better than that now, but he's, he's, uh, he's got great coordination. He's got the parts you can't teach. And as he gets himself in great shape, he has such a big ceiling, and he's what we've been missing here. He's got legit size. He can block shots. He can rebound. He can defend the paint and catches everything. He's grown 6'9", 240 at this point, so mm -hmm. uh, some, some legitimate size in there. Talk about Indiana All-Stars. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be a Kentucky All-Star, so he might very well be right. in that game. Unless there's a, uh, someone rigs the voting pool, he's going to be a lock <laughs> to be in that game. And, uh, and then obviously Tajay is certainly a f uh, favorite to be in the Indiana side as well. Let's talk about Tajay. Four-star guy, top 100 recruit. Uh, you talked about his size. Uh, 13 points per game, nine rebounds per game, and exploded this weekend. What did you say, had 26? He had 26 and 17 against, uh, I think it was Lawrence North, one of the uh, perennial programs in the state. But Tajay is... Uh, He's like Trey. He's only 17 years old. You can see how thin he is there, and, and uh, he's got to get stronger. But he has, again, legit sizes. You see him shooting the ball as well as he is and putting the ball on the floor. Keep in mind, he's 6'9 with a 7'1 wingspan, uh, able to do that. And both those guys are young. In both cases, they have the ages where they could have been high school juniors, and they're still good enough to play at this level, and I'm confident that they're both – scratching the surface of where they could be as players. Tajay had an offer from Western Illinois, too, by the way. He had a lot of offers, but from Western Illinois. <laughs> so you beat Billy Wright for him. I did, but we, we did. A bit. He, from, from Western Illinois, and he from a, I won't go through them all, but he had it, several BCS offers, too, when it was all said and done. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're thrilled to get him. He's uh, got a bright future. Think about this for family genes. He's got, yeah. on, his, uh, on his mother's side, he's, he's uh, first cousins with uh, Zach Irvin, the former Mr. Indiana uh, Former Mr. Basketball in Indiana plays at Michigan, and on his father's side, he's uh, cousins with Marcus and Jeff Teague and David Teague, who played at Purdue. So he's got uh, pretty good bloodlines. If only he can have the same career that those guys have. Yeah, uh, he's got he'll a chance. be pretty well he's off. He's got a chance to be a really good player, and uh, we're, we're really excited to have him. So it's Trey and uh, and Tajay coming into the Cardinals program next year, uh, and, and again it comes down to, to layering waves. When you bring in more talent, you stack stuff. And Keith Dembrock told that to you when you played at Akron. He said you got guys, you right. just need more. That's what he said, and it's it's uh, you know Keith and I have become friends, and and uh, and that was his point to me when we left Akron. He said, hey, I love your young guys, really good players, and you just have to keep bringing class upon class. And when you look at Central Michigan, that's what they were able to do. Is they got Fowler. They got uh, Hibbets, you know, they got uh, Simons, they got all those guys in that first class, but what they were able to do is back them up with Braylon Rayson, who's now in the sophomore class, 
They got in the freshman class guys that are they're only playing roles this year, but they're good players. They're two uh, big guys, and uh, Luke Meyer and, and uh, I forgot the name. Deron Scott. Deron Scott. And they got uh, and, you know they brought in another class behind him, and it's the way for us all to have continued success is to bring in class upon class, let them get older, let them mature. And, uh, and that's, to me, where we can really turn the corner. And there's that, that wave of youth, because every program goes through this. Central has no seniors. They have the one senior, Austin Keel, mm -hmm. but plays a couple minutes a game. Mm -hmm. And Ball State at this point, you've got one senior. Next year, you've got two seniors. So you layer the youth, and then as they get older, um, hopefully that success comes along with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, what's in the immediate future, though, for you guys now, though. Mm -hmm. Western Michigan, last time you played them, yeah. uh, it was a dogfight, and uh, yeah. you get them at home this time. It was a great game. I watched it uh, uh, last night, honestly, at my home. I was just going over our offense and defense from the game. and It was one of those great college basketball games, both teams competing, playing like crazy. And, uh, you know, we had obviously several opportunities to win it. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was emotionally a tough game, but, but uh, a great game, great college basketball game. And I expect another one in Worthen uh, tomorrow night. Let's go back to Kalamazoo and take a look at the first meeting between these teams. And we're going to jump right ahead to the end, though. Uh, this is one of the more bizarre plays. If you remember it, Xavier Turner knocks down a three. Sean Sellers gets thrown by Mario Matasevich underneath. Gets a couple of free throws. Cards were in the double bonus, and that tied the game in regulation. Um, Western Michigan did get another chance here with five seconds left. Cards uh, able to defend well enough that Connor Tavey uh, misses, and it goes to overtime. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of got crazy from there. And uh, you know, it's just one of those plays where at the end of the day we'll see it. The uh, kind of odd bounce that Tavy puts back in when the shot clock sounded and game clock sounded and we've talked about it ad nauseum. Um, it's a weird thing. Take it for what it is. Yeah, it's what it is. You said it right. It's a weird thing. You know, everyone uh, unfortunately when the building was fooled, including Connor Tavy, you know, you can yeah, see. His reaction's great. He just walks away. Yeah, he, walk, he thinks the game's over. You can see the referee on the bottom of the screen calling the game over and I'd never experienced anything like that in my life, but uh, but it is what it is, and we can just learn from it. Let's talk about the rest of the Broncos. David Brown, he has become their leading scorer again. I think he was third on the team the last time we saw him. He's back up to 16 points per game, led the Mac in scoring last year, and uh, yeah, that's that's what he does. Yeah, he's at 18 a game in the conference, and he's a really good player. It's We really talked about it coming into our game. He's the known. He's done it for now six seasons in, uh, in college. He's a really good player. and. Uh, an experienced player, and um, and he can score in bunches. So it's going to be a great, great challenge defending him. And then Connor Tavy is, he's a uh, catalyst for him because not only does he score, but he's also a great passer. And he really hurt us there in the second half as much as David Brown did. And got to do a better job on him. Austin Ritchie missed some significant time for them. Had a couple of broken bones in his hand. He is now back. What's interesting, you're not going to see a lot of video of him because it doesn't exist really from the last time you played Western. Thomas Wilder had to step up in his absence. Mm -hmm. Freshman, I think he played, he scored two points against Ball State in the first meeting in 11 minutes in a two overtime game. He dropped 33 their last time out in 23 minutes, 10 yeah. of 12, both misses were threes, and he was 11 of 11 at the free throw line. When we talk about how teams change. That's a change. Yeah, no, it was great. Ray. You love to see an opportunity arise for a player like that and take advantage of it, but gives them more depth. That's been the blessing in their injury right there is, is, uh, is they've created a, uh, kind of a, a new player that, that now can play alongside Austin Ritchie and only makes him deeper. Where's the rub for them? Offensively, they're one of the better teams in the league. Defensively, they're 11th in scoring defense. They're a little bit like us in the sense that they've been better on the offensive side of the ball than they have been on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, their strength is skill. Their strength is not necessarily speed or quickness or some of the things you need to defend well. And, and uh, so, like our, our game last time when we played them, 95 to 88, two high-scoring teams, and um, both of us are on a quest to continue to fine-tune our defense. Well, we talked about youth. A lot of this has been about youth today. Mm -hmm. um, they lose Shan Whittington. He, mm -hmm. He's good enough that he is on the Pacers. Um, yeah. You have to replace him with somebody. Drake Lamont is just a freshman. Yeah. So, if you're Steve Hawkins, you're thinking, all right, I've got my rim protector. He's just not there yet. And, and you know, Drake Lamont, I know, is a guy that you guys recruited, so you have mm -hmm. enough respect for. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're Western, you're thinking, here's our guy. It's just going to take some time. Yeah, he's, he's, that's right. No, if you look at Shane Whittington as a freshman, I think he averaged four points a game and played about 11 minutes. And it just uh, David Brown was the same. And he's first team all conference in his freshman year. He barely played. So Drake Lamont's got an opportunity for them as a freshman, but he'll be, he'll, you know, like all players, he'll continue to get better every year he's there. Cardinals are at home to take on Western tomorrow, and that's the key thing. 
You play on the road at Toledo on Saturday, but mm -hmm. you're home three of your last four here. Yeah, it's great. We're going to be home three of our last four, and, and uh, I, I'm expecting we're going to see uh, Matt Kamenick. He's, he's getting healthier. We're expecting to get him back in the mix here if all goes well, uh, really for all four games. And, and um, he's, he's our best defensive player and a real key piece for us on that side of the ball. So I think we're in position to finish strong. It's uh, up to us to take advantage of it. Triumphant return of Matt Kamenicki, I yeah. guess we can call it. Yeah, we need him, and uh, you know we really missed him, especially on the defensive side, both with his talent level, because he's an, he's a gifted defender, he's a great athlete, but uh, also with his heart. You know, he's, he's just a great competitor. He's a true team guy. He does all the little things that our team needs, takes charges, dives on the floor. So it'll be great to have him back. It's the Cards in Western Michigan inside Worthen Arena tomorrow night, Dollar Dog Night as well. Never want to miss that. We'll be back here to wrap it all up next week. It's the James Woodford Show.